Chris Yandex, CU Honor View, bringing you Las Vegas in the world. Today we welcome Hollywood actor, voiceover, artist, impressionist, the one and only Jim Beskaman is here. He's also the son of the great actress, Marion Ross of Happy Days fame, of course. Jim, thanks for making time this morning on CU Honor View. How are you, sir? Good, good morning to you, Chris and Alexa. It's very nice to meet you. And also joining us today, of course, is CU Honor View sponsor, um, Rob Gill, Steve of Chap at Epic Financial Strategies, LLC, Miss Alexa Criojo. Alexa, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Jim. Very nice to meet you as well. Mm. Jim, you have had a busy couple of years. You have been everywhere that anybody cares to see the world of pop culture. Why don't you give us a couple of highlights of the last couple of years? What's it been like? You've just been everywhere. Well, you know, I'm I'm on this planet with the rest of us. You know, we're all we're all trying to make make good, make make do, help our families. So uh, I'm an actor. I've been in show business a long time, as you mentioned. I've been an actor for over 35 years, I guess, and uh, been lucky enough to do a lot of interesting projects. Uh, during the last few years, I've been I've been doing um, a show called The Big Door Prize, which is on Apple TV Plus. And uh, I sound a lot like this because I sound like the actor Chris O'Dowd, whose father I play, a uh, wonderful Irish actor. So I went and worked on that little show a few times. And that's just rolling out now. And uh, a bunch of other really nice uh, television opportunities. Uh, a movie called Sweetwater that's done quite well at uh, festivals and uh, internationally, uh, directed by Martin Gigi. And... Uh, a show called, let's see, I did, uh, this is now going back a little bit, but I did uh, Gaslit with Sean Penn and Julia Roberts, where I played a uh, kind of a kind of a tough uh, s s semi-corrupt senator <laughs> during the Watergate era. And uh, gosh, what's that other one I'm thinking of? Um, Welcome to Chippendales. You were Phil Donahue. Like, you were yeah, Phil yeah, that's Donahue right. and on Hulu. That's right. Yeah, that's right. So, Donahue and on Hulu at the same time. Donna Hulu. Mm, I was Donna Hulu. I was down with that. That's for sure. It's a lot of fun. I also get to portray Robin Williams every now and then the blue genie character for Disney. I get to do that for games and other applications. A lot of fun. So I get to I get to basically be myself or be not myself. And, and who could who could ask for more? Jim, I just have to say before we throw it to Alex, of course, one more. Of course, you're now the, the official voice for KFC. You're the colonel. That's right. I've been a colonel for about six years, and uh, although I, you don't hear me too much anymore, but uh, uh, they sort of uh, seem to have shifted directions a little bit. But I did uh, have the honor of portraying the colonel quite a bit, and I just keep his spirit alive anyway on my own content on YouTube, so that uh, whenever they whenever they care to come back, I'm ready. But I did do it for about six or seven years. Uh, a lot of voiceovers, radio, uh, other special projects, and it's so much fun being Colonel Sanders. I have to say. Because I grew up seeing him do his own commercials, and, and uh, he was an active, alive spokesman for his own brand for years and years. And I, I, it, it'll be in my mind and in my heart forever. Um, Alexa, go ahead, questions. First of all, um, that's incredible. I, obviously, you don't know me personally, but I can't even do a Southern accent. I mean, it's mm -hmm. I can't impersonate anyone and that i think this is so incredible how does one find that talent like how did you even get in to what you do now i'm sure it developed in many ways but how did mm -hmm. you find this talent that you have well you know as a kid i used to i mean i was raised by a really wonderful actress mother who certainly put up with and encouraged in many cases my experimentation my uh, my play um i was just uh listening actually found an old you know, when you listen in the old days, we used to listen to albums or records, you know, flat 33 and a third records uh, as entertainment. And my mother had these wonderful old records of Winnie the Pooh. There was the poems of Winnie the Pooh as sung by some wonderful tenor gentleman. And uh, I had it in my mind. I was like, God, I remember those songs we used to listen to. And so I looked it up. Of course, it's on YouTube, the whole album. I had not heard these songs in a good long while, maybe maybe close to sixty years, and uh, and I listened to them last night, and it was very very moving. It was kind of emotional because these are songs from my very early childhood that I used to listen to with my mom. But they were playful and silly and fun, and that was the kind of thing that my mother definitely encouraged: playful, silly, fun songs, poetry, characters, 
uh, anything in the arts, she was like all over because she understood that very well. And so I, I grew up being indulged that way, not uh, not spoiled because we didn't have any money, but uh, spoiled from the point of view of, you know, you want to create something, little boy? I'm going to tell you how wonderful it is. And so voices were a part of that and characters and things like that. And I, I consider myself very fortunate. I love that. Oh, I'm sure that was. That probably brought back so many memories just from the you listening to those records. It's oh, man. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it, it's a great record. <laughs> Jim, I have to ask I have to ask you for two more. I promise I won't ask for any more, but can you please do Morgan Freeman? Oh, yes. In fact, at this hour of the morning where I am, it's definitely easier to do than later on in the day. You know, I, I was imitating Morgan Freeman years and years ago before a lot of people were. I think before the world had really caught on to the fact of what a wonderful, wonderful narration style and communicative style Morgan Freeman has. But uh, I, I started doing it just out of admiration. And then sooner or later, it was it became worth a dime or two. Can I also have can I also have Al Pacino from A Scent of a Woman? From a, specifically, you want it from a specific movie. Uh, because I believe in that movie, he has a southern accent. Hoo-ha! Says things like that. Yeah, Al Pacino's a big fan of Robert De Niro. Many times, many times have done Robert De Niro. But at this hour of the day, and this, the way that I sound right now, Gregory Peck is right in my wheelhouse. In fact, welcome to my wheelhouse with Gregory Peck. Alexa, go ahead. Now that that's incredible. Where where did you grow up, by the way? I grew up in Los Angeles, suburbs of Los Angeles. Angeles. Actually, I grew up where, where I live right now, actually. I'm, I'm, I came back home a few years ago and uh, settled again. I'd lived in New York for a long time. I lived in Spain. I was an art student, so I studied painting in Spain. And um, and then eventually decided that uh, that I wanted to make a go of it in, in, in show business. I got a little bit confused because my mother's career was so... Uh, unique and uh, attractive in a lot of ways, but I had to sort of figure out for myself what what was honorable and what was right for me about show business, you know, because Happy Days was a big phenomenon and uh, had a big impact on our lives, but it wasn't, um, it wasn't something you, go, you could say, oh yes, I, I think I'll be on a show like Happy Days. <laughs> That's, it's like saying, you know, I think I'll be struck by lightning a few times. It's just yeah. not really feasible. So I had to sort that out. And once I did, I, I moved to New York and uh, got started there. It was a great place to get started in the 80s. Uh, let me just tell you something, Jim. I couldn't imagine um, you and the great Rich Little will pass you under because many times we spent time with him here in Las Vegas. We were at his 80th birthday party when he was at the Trop. Obviously, they're moving to a new venue now because the Trop just recently closed. But I mean, like, what do you, I feel like I think of you and I think of Rich Little, thoughts on Rich. I mean, you guys are rare, though, these days. That's, I mean, I can't imagine you guys being on stage, him doing Jimmy Stewart and you standing next to him, you know, doing Al Pacino or some crazy thing like that. It would be amazing. Oh, I'd love that. Yeah, I would. Great. I, I've met Rich a few times. I interviewed him myself on my uh, YouTube channel. I nothing but respect. I mean, he is a living a living legend, truly, because he he was the high water mark and still is for for that kind of stuff uh, for impressions, right? And and the unique thing about him is it, he's unique in history because he actually interacted with Jimmy Stewart. You mentioned um, Orson Welles and Henry Fonda and many, many others. He actually had physical, you know, contact with these people who are gone, lost and gone, but iconic in their time. So there's never going to be really uh, another person like him. Although there's a, there's a, there are quite a few young people that are really, really good too. And I think YouTube and social media has made it possible for us to not only study one another and learn how to imitate one another, but also to create content that is impressions based. And there's some really terrific people out there. Well, I want to say something, Jim, I just want to transition here. Alexa's here today on behalf of C-100 Responsor, Rob Gill, who just put out a brand new book called Surviving Success. Alexa, why don't you tell Jim a little bit about it? Sure, yeah. I'm, I'm excited to hold the copy right here. So that's Rob Gill. Um, Surviving Success is, is really a beautiful uh, story about his life, um, his financial success, and how he has 
got into it, lost it, and got back up. Um, and a lot of financial strategies and tips to help people not just obtain wealth, but keep it, right? Because there's, um, and I'm, I'm sure you've you've heard in, in, in show business and, and things like that, when you have you, you have your big break, right, as they call it, and you make a mm. lot of money in a short amount of time, maybe you didn't come from a lot of money. Um, there's still a mindset that is that old version that didn't have a lot of money. So um, to be able to survive this newfound abundance is is sometimes challenging for people. So I think he speaks into that. You know, he's he's sober 27 years, so he's been through a lot um, in his life. And not only is it inspiring, but it is so educational. Um, so so I'm I'm happy that I'm I'm here to be able to talk about that. And um, yeah, you know, Jim, that's wonderful. State, that's very you know, that's very important. I, I mean. You're absolutely right. People that uh, one of the most uh, uh, victimized groups in America is the people that have just won the lottery, you know, and they get millions of dollars dumped on them and they invariably uh, almost one for one mishandle it because it's so un unnatural yeah. and so so fraught with, with disaster. Oh, no. No, no denying it, Jim. Let me just let me ask you, how's your mom doing? Mother's Day just passed. She's 95 past. You wanted to guess a couple years ago. How's she doing? She's good. Thanks. I just saw her yesterday at her house and uh, she's been retired for some time now, but she's uh, well taken care of. She's enjoying her retirement. She has a beautiful home. Uh, lots of ro the roses are just exploding everywhere around her house. And uh, she's very, very happy. So thank you. And healthy, too. It's amazing. Beautiful. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. One other thing, Jim, that maybe people don't ask you about, but I thought was very interesting, is, is that you have been part of some of the biggest video game franchises in history, Batman, Call of Duty, Minecraft, Hitman. I mean, how did you end up becoming like a vehicle for video games? Like, how did that work? Well, just like I did everything else. I mean, I, I audition all the time. I, I'm not the kind of celebrity that people very often call up and say, hey, we have a role for you. Will, will you accept this role? So I have to earn it all the time, like uh, like other working actors. And uh, so that's what I do. I, I get in front of my microphone in my booth, and I give the script a shot. I create characters all the time and send them back. And, and uh, every now and then they go, yes. <laughs> so that's exactly how it happens. And, yeah, I did a Star Trek uh, game uh, a couple of years, it just came out, I think last year, called Star Trek Resurgence, which is very popular, where I played a major character. Captain Solano was this kind of rangy, a uh, little bit of a Texas guy who uh, had, uh, he was a Starfleet commander who'd had a pretty bad accident with his, with his ship and was back in command of a new one and a little bit world weary and on edge. That was a lot of fun. It's, it's acting. All the things I do are in one way or another, are, are acting, even if it's just voice acting. And I uh, enjoy it tremendously. Alexa, questions? Yeah, I actually do have a question. Thank you for sharing, by the way. I think, you know, the fact that you're still, you know, you're still actively in your craft, right, is, is what I'm yep. hearing. And um, how has your process changed, you know, if you think back? How, how long have you been in, in the industry? Yeah, over 35 years now. Yeah, good long time. So if you had to look back 20 years, right? Obviously, the technology has changed our world, right? YouTube, mm -hmm. you mentioned you have a YouTube channel. And you yep. mentioned maybe younger people, how how much access they have, right? To be able to imitate and learn from others. What has changed from your process in the past to, to now with this newfound digital world we live in? Oh, so much, so much. I mean, I'm I'm an older person now. I know what the things are. I've I've seen it and I've experienced it. I've made mistakes. I have a tremendous amount of experience, and uh, also the, the artistic path which I'm on, which all artists are on, is that it's a path. And so every day you approach things a little differently. You learn, you develop. A, you know, businesses talk about best practices, and that's what artists get too. They go, "Wow, you know, when I do that, uh, it always works." Or audiences really love this. I've learned so much from doing live performance because audiences teach you what they love you know they, they go wow every time i do that character people fall over you know they they just love it or they say their face hurts or you know so i gotta i gotta keep that in the show definitely uh but i think overall i think there's a um uh a kind of professionalism that i i wish i i could have had earlier certainly 20 years ago would have been great where I, uh, particularly on like scripted material, 
uh, to take the time to really create and craft a character uh, that is very, very unique to me and my own kind of creation, rather than the opposite, which a lot of people do, which is like, oh, let's see, let me look at this script. I know what they want. Let me deliver what they're expecting, mm -hmm. which, you know, is a kind of a survival mechanism. But at the end of the day, it's not it's really not as good as good as as creating something. You know, well, what what could this person be? You know, it it says it's a, he's a he's a plastic surgeon. Okay, do I know any plastic surgeons? Can I call up a plastic surgeon and interview them and see what they're like and see what I can grasp from their from their personality? Anyway, I didn't do I didn't do that kind of work and uh, back then because I didn't really know that that was one of the tricks of the trade. Now I do, and 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 that's the sort of thing that I turn to. I love that. I hear wisdom, no graduation, um, and constantly just, you know, process innovation and nailing down what works. Love yeah. That. Yeah. Uh, innovation, no graduation. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't want to graduate. <laughs> Jim, do you use techniques like sense memory to help you? No, I don't. I use, uh, I use a lot of creativity and imagination. And uh, of course I have a memory, uh, and it does include senses, but I think what you're talking about is a specific sort of thing, returning to past incidents in my life to to create emotions. I don't do that. I you can create an emotion Correct. immediately. Yeah. You don't you don't need to go back. And if you go back in time to one of your more painful or or confusing parts of your life, at the end of the day, that's that's a whole nother process, and I, I don't I don't find it personally helpful. But I do I do realize that through practice that you can you can create emotions on the spot you can create characters on the spot you you have infinite ability to create and that's what i deploy yeah it was said that that actually harmed marilyn monroe i don't know if you know that or not i i'm, I'm sure she, she that was one of the many things that harmed marilyn monroe she had a very unfortunate life mm. Absolutely. Um, let me just say, Jim, just as a side note, when your when your mom was on with us, she was as sharp as a tack, by the way, a couple of years ago. She's incredible. She is just she's incredible. A, she's a treasure. She's a total treasure. Thank you, you for know. mentioning it. And then, of course, also, um, you've also had some moments in commercials in recent years. So why don't you tell me about that? Yeah, not a lot, but uh, I used to do, well, uh, Colonel Sanders has been a completely commercial experience, for sure. I also played George Washington a few years ago on a Geico commercial that was a lot of fun and uh, involved me being uh, pushed on a on a boat across a highway, uh, George Washington uh, on the Delaware Expressway, I believe was the conceit. Uh, and it was, it was one of those, one of those visual gags that, uh, you know, when we see commercials, we see especially funny commercials. We see them over and over again, and after about the second viewing, we get the joke. We're not that interested. Let's just move on to our your regular programming. And uh, I found that that particular piece of humor was so nice. It was always funny because it it was always so ridiculous. And I enjoyed doing the shoot. I got to wear uh, prosthetic makeup to make me look more like George Washington, and. Uh, the, the makeup was designed by a guy who had just gotten his start 25 years earlier on a movie called The Grinch that I was a part of. And so I had not seen him in 25 years. And then he became uh, a top guy in his field, Christian Tinsley, who does big, big movies and TV shows like Westworld and others. And a wonderful makeup artist. So that was a nice reunion, too. Yep. Last one I have for you is, is that got two more but when he when you do your impressions and your face do your facial expressions change is that part of doing the voice or more like well, that's what i'm told yeah that's what i'm told yeah i mean you're taking on a viewpoint of someone like robin williams for example you'd have to hold your face a little bit differently because he's moving at such high speed so it's almost like you have to put seat belts on your face and uh who else let's see who else is the one that has it oh, robert de niro obviously changes his uh, structure of his face to turn his mouth upside down it's a uh, Pretty important to the sound, you know. Is there one you enjoy doing more than any other? Well, lately I really enjoy doing Patrick Stewart because Sir Pat has a wonderful sort of uh, friendly <coughs> delivery, and um, you know, I, I think I uh, I find that he's a very beloved character that people love to hear things from, and it's almost always inappropriate to see to hear Sir Pat comment about things in the modern era. So, you know, when he talks about YouTube, 
for example. It's there's something very charming about it. You look like Patrick Stewart when you do that impression. Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm I not feel kidding. Like yeah, people like say that when he people does. People say it. that. Yeah, people say that. Yeah, that's the acting part, I guess. Yeah, it's fun. But listen, you you've got three hundred and fifty thousand followers on your Instagram page, among other places. Obviously, people love this stuff still. Apparently so. Yeah, a lot on TikTok. Over four hundred thousand on TikTok. Yeah, yeah, they love it. I think there's it speaks to. You know, doing an impression of somebody, uh, this is just a theory, but I mean, you have to really kind of love them. You have to love that celebrity. You have to understand them or strive to understand them. And I think that is part of one of the things that's demonstrated about it is that people can be so fond of one another that they can come awfully close to becoming that other person. Um, I mean, we do that in life with our partners and with our children. You know, we sort of become them in a way, and they become us. And there's something very beautiful part of the human experience that way. So it's it's very. I, I haven't got it all figured out yet, but it's extremely. It's deep. This this love for impressions that we have. Alexa, final question. Well, I just want to say I, I I love what you just said because it's it's a form of flattery, also, right? You you admire who they are and you want to impersonate mm -hmm. that and um and deliver that message to others as you see them, right? So that mm -hmm. that's cool. Um, I guess my last question, um, Jim, like where do you see yourself going next? Like in the next, you know, five ten years, what's what's the goal? What's the maybe a vision you have? I have a film that I've written, a screenplay that I want to get. Uh get made into a, a film uh it's an will obviously be an independent film about an impressionist kind of a thriller comedy thriller so i want to see what that could spark i also want to do a lot more live performing and tour around i don't have a tour manager at this point and uh, uh i i've been doing my shows in los angeles a show called jim impressions uh, which is an hour of celebrity voices and music and song and stories so i'd like to get that out in the world anybody watching contact me jim com, and uh and, and uh, i also want to keep doing the colonel sanders and other characters for companies mm -hmm. uh re you know bring back to life some of these old icons jim being here in las vegas and the entertainment capital world and steve interview being one of las vegas's fastest growing media outlets but just letting you know of course we've got on over a thousand celebrities and newsmakers during our time here you know everyone from james Conn to robert wagner to diane carroll to ernest borg nine and the greats of today and some of the stars of today, like Zoe Sodan and Kate Beckinsale and Terrence Howard, among others. Um, we are surprised you're not here more in Las Vegas, and we got to work on that, man. We got to work on that. We got to get you here. Cool. Yeah. You know, we got to work lovely. here. There's, I'd enjoy there that. are there are comedy factories and venues people would love. I'm just going to say, if you wouldn't mind closing, can you do me a little more Robin Williams? I just love that. I'm oh, sure, absolutely. You mentioned comedy factories. That's great. I mean, it's it's interesting to know that Las Vegas is the is the place that has all the factories where the comedy's made. There's a lot of people think they make it at home. I imagine there's little journeyman people that are doing it down in their basement. But uh, it's nice to know there's some big factories. Must be, must be interesting when the whistle blows. Must be incredible. Well, listen, we're gonna re we gotta re we gotta figure out a way to reunite you here with Rich Little, of course. So I'm gonna leave it that there. Um, the great Jim Meskimen. I mean, Hollywood, everything. I mean, Jim, thank you, and of course, Scott, all the best to your mother. You know, I hope she lives to 195. Just incredible woman, and uh, thank you so much for being with us today, Jim. And of course, um, C1 and sponsor Rob Gill's chief of staff at Epic Financial Services and Strategies LLC, Miss Alexa Crager. Thank you both for being on C1 today. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you for watching today's CY interview segment from Las Vegas. Please hit the like button and please hit the subscribe button to be updated on all future CY interview content from Las Vegas and beyond.